Three, we are live. Intro. Hello. Yeah. Com um pouco de atraso, o Satã, a gente estava numa convenção com o Satã aqui agora há pouco, uma conversa descontraída, atrasou um pouquinho o meeting. Galera, desculpa o atrasinho aí, mas estamos aqui, terça-feira, agenda Heavy Culture, novembro, iniciando com o pé esquerdo, né? Left, não é só o left hand. Com a presença aí de Steve Sylvester do DFSS. Welcome, Steve. Uh, Christian. Ok. Christian, seja bem-vindo aí. Hoje a gente está com uma baixa aqui. O Ivan, o Ivan está com um problema aí, não pode aparecer, mas mandou abraços a todos. E vamos lá para a gente não perder tempo. Uh, okay. Pessoal, uh, como é que o Ivan fala sempre, né? Subscribe the channel. Né? Se inscreva no canal. Ring the faça bell um... button. <risos> Ring the bell button. Don't forget Isso, it. aperta o sininho, aquela coisa toda, e vamos lá e participem aí. Vamos... É uma lenda, o DFSS é uma lenda do metal italiano, que a gente vai, que tem o privilégio aqui de estar com o Steve, vamos, vamos aproveitar. Segue o baile, meu amigo Cristiano. Ok. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to talk to you. You're such of a Thank you, guys. Okay. It's a uh, pleasure. It's gonna be... So, uh, George is going to ask the first question, okay? And then I'm going to give you your answer, and then I'm going to give the Portuguese version. <laughs> okay. Eu... Vamos like começar pelo, pelo álbum novo, né? O Ten, né? Que, yes. que a gente tem acompanhado aí. Tá, tá, tá dando um boom nas plataformas digitais, enfim. Como é que ele está enxergando essa, essa, esse, essa repercussão do, 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 do álbum, né? Se, se a pandemia já está um pouco mais resolvida aí na Itália, enfim, como é que estão tá os preparativos, as expectativas do uhum. DFSS em cima desse play que está matador, depois a gente fala um pouco dele, né? Uhum. E, enfim, né, para ele passar um pouco do, do cenário atual da banda, perspectivas, expectativas em função uhum. do novo álbum. Okay, the first question is obviously about 10, okay? As far as we know, the album is doing pretty well on the digital platforms, and uh, we would like to know if you have something scheduled, a concert or anything for this album, and what are the expectations for the next year? I don't know how is the situation there in Italy now, if you are going to have mm -hmm. concerts or, or not, but uh, what are the expectations for the concerts uh, next year for this album? Okay, um, the new album, 10, is out only from a few days, but uh, just give us um, an excellent feedback uh, everywhere. I'm very happy. Oh, regarding the concert, the live show, uh, first of all, I want to wait that the whole situation in the world concerning live show can be changed because we need a participation uh, with the, our public. We don't like to play in front of people that are sitting uh, or that are spaced uh, or uh, ah, we want we want uh, we waiting for a normalization of the whole situation for a concert anyway in the next years we are just uh, called from uh, take part in walking open air in germany and some right. other important uh, shows uh, in europe we prefer to make only few important shows and not uh, so many concerts but the important for us is the, the interaction within the people because we want to yes. um, to play a real concert no limitation no restrictions mm -hmm. great you're gonna give the portuguese version for the people here bom ele falou ali que o tema né, foi lançado há pouco agora dois dias e tá indo muito bem né uh, a vibe tá bem grande assim Quanto aos shows, assim, ele está esperando para fazer os shows no Vakken em alguns shows importantes na Europa. Né? Os shows pequenos, assim, ainda ele está tá limitado. Então, ele não quer sofrer essa limitação. Eles preferem uh, tocar mais, né? Ver como é que vai ficar ano que vem essa situação da pandemia toda para poder fazer um, um show 
grande e bom, né? sem limitação. Fazer um show que, que é o, o DFSS, ele é aquela coisa... I, I can say that a concert uh, like yours is something like Alice Cooper concert. In a small place, it wouldn't be like very nice to to see you. It's like a, a big stage, something like that is the best place to see uh, the FSS playing. Yes, I like to have uh, in front of me people that really participate to the show. Uh, with the COVID restriction, you know, it's impossible by now to make a complete show because uh, all people are restricted. Not so many people can enter in the, the arena and uh, yeah. people must be uh, is, is sitting uh, in, not in front of you, but uh, can interact on the stage. This is not, yeah. uh, not the part of the show that we like. We need um, a, a change of energy between the, the band and the public. Yeah, got it. Gonna give it. Uh, so, like, ele tá falando que eles preferem mais esses shows grandes justamente por isso, pela participação do público, a interação, a troca de energia com o público. E, né, é, por enquanto, tá limitado, né? Não tem como fazer um show que tenha toda essa troca de energia, que tenha o público interagindo com a banda. O público tá ali, tá limitado, tem espaços, né? Uh, algumas pessoas vão ter que estar sentadas. There, there are some rules here in Brazil that we have to see to watch concerts in seats. Yes, okay, in like Italy too. Spain. Yeah. We hope the change, the situation could change next year. Yeah, really, really. I think so. I think if all the people get vaccinated in time, uh, take care of themselves, pay yeah. attention. Yeah. Like the problem is like uh, most people still are a little bit afraid of the vaccines. I don't understand this kind of thinking, but you know. You know, it's that the sad part of it, you know, like here in Brazil is a fiasco. <laughs> Vamos falar de música que é melhor. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I would like to ask you about the video for Zora. Uh, yeah. It was amazing. Uh, I, I really enjoy mm -hmm. it because uh, you resurrected the character that here in Brazil, uh, I say resurrected because a few people know her in Brazil. She was uh, published in the beginning of the 80s here. I was eight when I saw her. Thanks mm. God, my parents never care about what I, I was reading. Okay, <laughs> they, I always said it's about Dracula, <laughs> so it's like they didn't know about it. Uh, did, do you have any participation in the video? The idea for the video? Of course, I was not aware that also in Brazil Zora was known. Because Zora was a um, character of the sexy horror comics in Italy that uh, beginning uh, at the beginning of the 70s, 70, 1972, I, I think, uh, till the hate uh, of the Hades. So I was uh, always a great collector of horror, sexy comics. I have yeah. ev everything. I collect all, all of them. And uh, I really loved Zora, Zora the Vampire, the Vampira, the, like a character. And I always think today to make a song uh, for her one day. So uh, when uh, some years ago, uh, some friends of mine had take the, um, uh, the, the rights uh, to, uh, to resurrect the Zora and some other characters of these uh, comics. I take part of the project uh, like a screenwriter uh, and also became a, a character inside the new adventures of Zora, like Sylvester's The Demon. And nice. uh, <laughs> well, it was very funny, yes. So I created the single and then the video clip that respect the mood and the situation of the comics. So, Sexy, vintage, uh, and a lot of uh, irony, very erotic. I, yeah, I really loved it. It was like, uh, according to like a perfect version of the comics. It was yeah. great. Unfortunately, uh, it was censored because it was full of naked uh, sheen uh, of people yeah. naked. So it was uh, completely censored uh, everywhere. I'm <laughs> sorry. Here in Brazil, it was not censored. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> great. So I really got surprised that it wasn't censored. It's like, I got like, what the hell? Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, her 
old movie. I, I, I think it's in the beginning of the, the 80s, too. Mm -hmm. I don't remember who produced the movie, but there was an old one. It was like uh, 81 or 82. I don't remember. It's a very old movie from, from Zora, too. I think yes. Italian. It was an Italian movie directed by the Manetti brothers, uh, friends of mine. The, but there uh, was not so many um, uh, connected with the uh, comics, uh, just the title and, uh, and something else. But uh, was not a hard movie with vampires, uh, with sex and blood like the comics. It was something else. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk to people here. Bom, uh, quanto ao vídeo do Zora, sim, uh, o Steve ele é fã de quadrinhos, né? Ele adora uh, quadrinhos de horror e quadrinhos eróticos, né? E ele sempre quis fazer algo para homenagear a Zora, né? Então, tipo, ele tem a participação dele na, na escrita do, do vídeo, né? Ele colaborou bastante para isso, para fazer uma coisa que fosse bem uma homenagem para ela, como é a música em si. Então, tipo, isso foi bem legal. E ele também não sabia né, que a Zora foi publicada no Brasil na década de 80. Na verdade, como eu disse para ele, poucas pessoas, né? Que acho que a maior parte aqui no Brasil é só quem tem da minha idade para cima. Uh, conheceram ou puderam ler alguma coisa da Zora, porque a quem publicou, agora não lembro o nome da, da editora, foi uma editora pequena, né? Então, tipo, pouca gente realmente conheceu, e outra porque eram quadrinhos uh, para maiores de 18 na época, então, tipo, para te conseguir comprar aquilo era quase um tráfico. Vai lá, o George is gonna ask you another uh, question. Eu, yeah. vou, eu vou bater de novo no, no disco novo, né? O Ten, uh -huh. o ten yeah. tem 10 músicas, né? Yeah, <risos> ten tem 10 yeah. músicas. Olha que, que maluco, né? E eu queria saber qual, quais são as músicas favoritas dele desse novo álbum. Ok, Oi. George, eu gostaria de saber quais são as favoritas songs no novo álbum. Yours. Well, it's difficult for me to choose uh, one song in the album because uh, all 10 songs that composed the new album are for me uh, part of my artistic um, work in the last few years, the period where I composed the album. So I love uh, all of the, of the 10 songs. Uh, I can say also that, uh, for example, there is another song dedicated to a movie's uh, a comics uh, character that is Suspiria, Queen of the Dead, that I love. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that I love in particular. It's not uh, connected to the um, movie of Dario Argento. It's uh, connected to another um, um, another um, comics that is called Suspiria. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you don't know that in Brazil because it's very quite new. And yeah, uh, so the, the movie, the Dario Argento movie, we know. Yeah, but they're, the they're not connection. Uh, yeah. Suspiria is, a, is dedicated to another um, character of the comics, Suspiria, the Queen of the Dead. It is a son of Lucifer. And uh, the song is a voyage for the band inside, uh, inside hell. Uh, meted with um, Zora that uh, show us the uh, hell and the rain of Suspiria. We also shoot another video for this uh, that is a continuation of the one of Zora. Wow, nice. I want to see that. Oh, talking about videos, uh, I want to congratulate you for Temple of the Rain. I really mm -hmm. love the song and the video. The video was amazing. Uh, I was you. very happy to see that. And uh, I also enjoy a lot the lyrics. I, I, I really appreciate the lyrics. Uh, I, I really, well, I am kind of a fan of your lyrics too, because it, the one thing that attracts me to a band is also the lyric content. Thank and, you. Uh, to say yours are great. Okay, uh, speaking in Portuguese now, uh, ele diz que é difícil né, nomear ali quais os sons favoritos dele, né? porque ele compôs todas as coisas e tal, mas Suspiria, né, que é ligado também a uma personagem de quadrinhos, né, não a Suspiria do Dario Argento, é um dos sons que ele mais gostou, assim, já estão planejando até um vídeo, né, então, tipo, é difícil para ele, assim, eu, né, it's like my favorite songs, it's like uh, The Black Plague, the opening, the opening mm -hmm. song, 
uh, Temple of the Rain is amazing. Suspiria, obviously, and uh, Zora. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, can you talk to us about the editions of them? I know that there are different editions, like uh, a double LP, uh, CD, and a digipack, right? Yeah. This because uh, I always uh, follow uh, personally all the graphics and the uh, artworks of each um, album, of each um, work uh, of that assess. Because I really want that uh, every product could be rich and, um, and professional. So I follow all the graphic or uh, the artworks uh, from the beginning to the end. I know, for example, can, then for them there are many versions. For example, the CD on a box uh, set that contains ah. <laughs> that is uh, laminated uh, like a mirror, and inside uh, you can find uh, also the Digipack CD, but also the comics. Yeah, yeah. Like the a, 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 a special a special comic with um, the history of the the album. So the, there is the band uh, with Dora the Vampira and then uh, Suspiria and in the travel uh, in hell. And uh, all of the comics is designed by Alex Orley. It is a great and famous uh, um, uh, artist. It was designed for uh, Marvel and DC Comics. Yeah, I know that, because I'm a huge fan of comic books too, and also he draws some uh, paintings for the Italian band Opera 9 too, yeah. and I don't remember which other bands, but there are other bands in Italy that uh, also used his art too. It's great, uh, I, I really like this uh, comic uh, art that he put on the on this album, and the other two, because he, he is a great artist too. And uh, I, I really wish I could have this comic book because it seems to be beautiful. It's something that uh, it's really nice to have within the album. Yeah. I'm uh, going to talk to the people here. Bom, o álbum vem, com, né, vocês viram ali mostrando com as edições bem diferentes, assim, né, com o Slipcase, que a gente chama. O Digipack vem com uma edição em quadrinhos também, né, que é pelo, feita pelo Harley, que é desenhista da, foi desenhista da DC, foi desenhista da Marvel, né. Então, tipo, ele é muito preocupado com essa parte, né? A arte gráfica, a capa, isso tem uma importância também. Uh, até porque ele é fã de quadrinho também. Então, isso é uma coisa que é importante ali. Tem que ter esse, yeah. esse visual. E o DFSS também é uma banda que é ligada com essa coisa da uh, visual. É algo muito importante para a banda. Então, é como... A cover é, like, really beautiful. Eu really enjoy that. E, uh, talking about this kind of thing uh you were really like uh, influenced by alice cooper right yes um, and of <laughs> course when we started um, in 1977 <laughs> no, oh, oh, obviously i i know alice cooper and also kiss but they were not uh, so a great influence for uh, the starting of that assess at the time i was only a teenager a baby mm -hmm. And uh, and I listen to other kind of music such as the sweet, you know, I don't know, I don't know if you like it, the sweet yes. Slade, Mark Boland. I was all very influenced um, as a teenager from the glamour rock of the 70s. But my idea was only to put together the glamour rock of the sweet or the Mark Boland with the horror movies of the Hammer production with the mm -hmm. vampire monsters and so. And with the punk uh, influence of the music, because in 1977 I was in London and I see for the first time punk rock and was a shocking for me. Yeah. So I, I would like to put uh, sweet punk rock, armor, and also the sexy comics uh, like Dora, like Yakula, Ultra Tumba, or Terror, oh. all, the, all together in um, original uh, things. So started yeah. that, that assess. Great. You mentioned Jacula. I'm a real fan of Antonio Rex. <laughs> it's like a few yeah. people know him here in Brazil because he's really underground. But yeah. his music has such importance in, uh, I, I think, even for the black metal bands. <laughs> because it's 
definitely link it to occultism and satanism and things like that. So it's like I'm a real fan of him too. And o, uh, o Christian, não esquece da tradução, meu amigo. Sim, sim. Uh, George is demanding me to translate. <laughs> okay. uh, então, falando aí da, das influências, né? Uh, quando ele ouviu o Alice Cooper, ele ainda era bem piá, assim. Então, não tem uma influência tão grande quanto teve as outras bandas, tipo o Sweet, né, o punk inglês também, que influenciou bastante ele, assim, quando ele foi para a Inglaterra. E ele queria fazer essa coisa, assim, o horror, assim, né, trazer o horror, o glam rock, e um pouco de punk para dentro do, do que seria o DFSS. É um caldeirão, né? <risos> Colocando tudo ali, mexe e traz essa vibe do, dos quadrinhos, que ele sempre foi fã também, né? Então, tipo, uhum. nós temos aí uma banda que é, como o cara fala, é uma banda completa, né? Tem, ali tu tem tudo que tu precisa. E também ali, como eu e ele estavam falando, ele mencionou o Jácula. Eu, eu, não sei se tu conhece o Antonio Rex, esse cara é um cara é uma lenda na Itália, assim, também. Esse cara é uma das primeiras bandas que dá pra dizer que é banda satânica mesmo, assim, dentro da Itália, assim. E eu não sei nem como é que o cara conseguiu lançar alguma coisa naquela época. Né? I was talking to George about uh, Yakula because it was like uh, in the 70s too, and it was pretty satanic, spiritual, and in Italy. Yeah. Like, how yeah. the hell did he release <laughs> that? <laughs> Yes, when we started in 1977, we are um, only just a child. Uh, we are not aware of what we are doing. We also only do the things we like to do um, without thinking so much at this. Many years after, many people told us that we was the prime movers of a movement because we started to do satanic things on stage many years before Venom or Merciful Fate, for example. And yeah, so, so no, for but, sure. <laughs> but for us, uh, for us was natural. Uh, we also only do the things we like to do. <laughs> we are without things into other things. Yes. É, ele tava falando ali que ele começou, né, quando eles começaram, eles não sabiam direito o que eles estavam fazendo. Eles eram garotos ainda, né? Então, tipo, tem essa treta, assim, eles começaram a fazer isso, essa coisa ligada com o satanismo, coisa tal, muito antes do Venom, muito antes das bandas até do Sign Black Metal, assim, então isso é interessante. Uh, perguntei? Uh, eu queria perguntar para ele o que, que ele achou, né? Uh, a gente está falando de uma banda aí que é muita, é muita vanguarda, né? É muita vanguarda. O que, que ele achou da, do Ghost? <risos> ah, <não. risos> so, George is asking about Ghost, did you like it? Yeah, I know. I know, and uh, I like so much. Yeah, he likes it a lot. He knows the band and likes it. Did you know that uh, the FSS influenced lot of, lots of black metal bands, even there in Italy? I would say that Bulldozer is one that is really influenced by the visual of your band. <laughs> I don't I'm know if a, you know Bulldozer. I'm a close friend with Bulldozer. I participate <laughs> also. <laughs> Also on this record with Andy Panigada, the guitar player that composed many music with me for the, this album. Oh, yeah. Now it makes sense. <laughs> Great. I, 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 I really like Bulldozer and uh, it's like the first time that I listened to the, okay. Come on, Bulldozer listens to that. No, it's like. Amazing. Uh, it was great. <laughs> gonna... we, also, we also made a split uh, some years ago on um, Christmas split uh, Bulldozer and DFSS together. Yeah, yes. Oh, nice. Estamos falando aí do, dessa coisa de eles terem influenciado as bandas, né? O Bulldozer que eu citei foi uma das, das italianas, eles têm esse link aí com a banda, né? Eles são amigos, né? São, são bem próximos assim, até tocou guitarra, tocou junto. E também tem esse split também, né? Que eles gravaram junto no Natal. Uhum. Tem uma pergunta ali embaixo ali. Uh, can you see the question underlined there? Any, any other question? Well, uh, I I can add only that uh, I hope that uh, the new album can be published in Brazil too. Yeah. We have two albums only, I think, in Brazil now. And that was still Sylvester and Heavy Demons. Yeah. Uh, yes. It yes. was printed by a friend of mine that is called Alan Lugar from the Black Seal production in, here in Brazil. Cool. So I hope that uh, more of uh, our production can be printed uh, on your country. <laughs> yeah, I really hope it because 
Uh, this album is amazing. Obviously, the other ones too. You have great other albums too that I wish they can be released in the future too, because uh, they are important. They have such an importance in the music scenery too. They are like the rock horror and the music too. Yeah. And uh, yeah. this one I really expected to have a copy too because uh, I got really fascinated by this new album. The visual, the production, that's why they produced an Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The, the, the new Iron Maiden, uh, I didn't like the production. Oh, it seems more like more. they did it as fast as they could and okay, this is it. <laughs> Great. Okay, I'm going to speak a little bit in Portuguese. Eh? Ele sabe que os álbuns foram lançados aqui no Brasil, né? E ele tem esperança que o 10 também, o 10, né? Também seja lançado aqui. E a gente espera né, que podemos tê-lo aqui mesmo, né? Então, tipo, é, um, é uma banda importante dentro do, do cenário metal aqui, né? para nós, assim, que somos mais velhos, né? E que tem o seu fator né? gráfico também ligado, assim. Ó, é uma banda visual e uma banda musical ao mesmo tempo. São as duas coisas. É, o verdadeiro é, é, é a arte, não adianta. Aquela coisa que o cara chama assim. Quem é fã de quadrinhos vai querer ter pela capa, pela, pelo encarte, coisas assim. Eu, né, que sou fã, né, I am a comic book reader fan, too. Uh, wish I could help the comic book for them, too. Because it's really amazing. And uh, there are lots of fans in Brazil that are also comic book readers, and this is good. Like most of the people who know you actually are the people who are uh, readers. Uh, there is a friend of mine. He is a graphic artist. He is a real fan of Horley. And uh, when I showed the new album, it's like, oh, that's uh, Horley art, and I got like, ah. <laughs> Could be now the right time to get the sales to come in Brazil to make a, a complete horror show. <laughs> yeah, it would be great to have a, a horror show next year here, or maybe you know, in the next two years, something like that. But I, I, I really hope you come to Brazil because uh, it would be very interesting to have a, a, a good, like this horror concert. We didn't have anything like that here in Brazil. Uh, our bands here are completely different. We don't have any any band linked to this kind of production here in Brazil. It's like uh, mainly because uh, the country is a little bit poor and mainly because some bands seems not to care about the, the visual they cause to the people. They want them, they just want to play as heavy as they can and okay. It's like <laughs> most of the people don't associate art with music, which is a pity actually. Okay. We hope to come soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope. I really wanted to see you live here, right, George? Dez, ten, ten, dez albums, né? Desde 81. Qual que ele mais assim se orgulha de ter lançado aí dos dez discos aí? Qual que deu mais repercussão? Enfim. Okay. Okay. Ten is the tenth album, and George is asking about uh, which is the the album that you were most proud of doing. Oh, um, I think all because uh, each album uh, respect uh, reflect a part of me in that period that I compose it. I always uh, evolve my sound, uh, uh, record after records. So yes. each album is an uh, aspect of me or that years or that period. So actually, I my best album is ten because uh, ten is reflect what I'm using better now. But if yes. you make these questions three years ago, I can answer to Rock and Roll Armageddon or Resurrection. Because every every album is important for me because it's a very part of me, of my artistry. And I want to respect uh, all what I am in that moment without follow any passion or any pressure. So Great. this is what I am today. Okay. I'm going to give the Portuguese version. Uh, ele fala ali que, para ele, todos os álbuns são importantes porque os álbuns refletem parte dele, os álbuns são parte dele. Então, cada álbum é um momento dele, é uma parte dele. Então, tipo, agora, nesse momento, o álbum favorito dele é o Ten, né? Porque é o momento que ele tá. Uh, assim como foi o Resurrection, anos atrás, né? Então, tipo, ele tem essa peculiaridade, assim, cada álbum tem uma evolução, ele vai evoluindo de acordo com o álbum, e cada álbum tem seu valor, tem, é, é como tu olhar para trás, 
e não se arrepender daquilo que tu fez e aprender e evoluindo. Então, tipo, isso é muito importante para ele. Uma, um Mas, complemento, tipo... porque a gente viu né, décadas de 80, 90, 2000, né, a gente vê o DFSS lançando esses 10 álbuns durante essas décadas. Qual uhum. a, a década que ele entende que, que a banda foi mais entendida? Porque os fãs vão mudando. O, o, o fã do metal dos anos 80 era de um jeito, né? 90. Como é que ele viu isso? Uh, uh, como é que ele viu o DFSS evoluindo dentro dessas décadas e como os fãs que vão mudando absorveram o conceito da banda, enfim? Ok. Uh, talking about the evolution of the band, the band is like uh, 40 years now. <laughs> It's like so. 44. 34. 34. 34. So it's like almost 40, <laughs> almost. So you have three decades, three different decades. We have yeah. the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s. Yeah. Uh, uh, which one uh, uh, do you think it's your uh, favorite era and uh, the fans understood the band better? Oh, um, in the beginning, in the late 70s, in the beginning of the 80s, when I started everything, I was a, a child and everything was new for me. Was a, uh, everything was a great experience. And uh, then, um, decades from decades, I acquired more experience and uh, was aware of what I could do in music, like a producer, like a singer, like a composer. And uh, then I uh, always uh, look at around uh, to enrich my sound uh, without uh, to deny anything of what I started, but every time enriching here with more and more um, um, experience, experience of life, experience art in art, artistic mm -hmm. experience. So um, every decade was important in uh, the, um, the same way. Because yes. uh, uh, I never stopped to to study to to work. I also give something more and more and more, and never finished. Uh, for me, the um, that success is um, a part of life. Uh, is is myself. What I do in music and lyrics, in what I do and what I write, uh, is what I am day by day, like a man. So. Um, I live all the decades in absolute freedom because uh, moving in the underground, uh, um, I I reached any pressure between labels or something else. I also every every time I worked in uh, absolute freedom. So right. for me, every every period was was great. And how do you see the difference of the audience from that time, like the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s audience? How do you see them? Oh, Because it changed a lot. As there is, like, nowadays... The, uh, the, the audience is various. So uh, I can see on um, front of stage um, very young boys, but also, uh, also big and um, old person. So, People that are aged uh, 50 or, or more <laughs> that they follow me from the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is great. What I also I? see many time um, parents that give the, the songs to see the, the concert. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. Both are fans uh, of that success, well, and that is very great. A great satisfaction. Sim. Bom, uh, speaking in Portuguese a little bit here. Uh, ele vê cada década com uma evolução diferente da banda, né? ele nunca parou de compor, ele está sempre ativo, ele está sempre estudando como compositor, como produtor, o DFSS é o, é o que ele é, tanto nas letras, uh, né, refletem a vida dele, coisa assim, e a parte do público também, ele vê o público crescendo diferente, né? agora, tipo, por exemplo, tu vê o público uh, mais novo e também tu vê o público mais velho, e tu vê o público mais velho levando os filhos para dentro do dos shows, assim, o que é bem, bem legal, assim, porque é, é uma geração completamente diferente, duas, três gerações ali, uh, de, diferente, e, eu, e ele sempre se preocupou em crescer dentro disso, né, tem aquela coisa de, ele nunca botou o fim, tipo, ah, vamos parar, não, tá sempre ali trabalhando, tá sempre estudando e sempre evoluindo, que é o mais importante, a evolução do DFS é, é muito importante para ele, e também uh, no quesito, assim, da banda, né, 
Jorge, vai perguntar alguma coisa? Não, o público aqui, Christian, tu leia ali para nós, por favor. Uh -huh. uh, I see the influence on vocals. So, uh, yes, uh, someone asked me what my favorite singers. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's very simple. Uh, my favorite all time singer is not the older from Slade. That his vocals is incredible. I bet we all. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, also Dan McCaffrey from Nazareth, for example. Uh, Tom Kiefer from Cinderella. Uh, John Oliva from the first singer of uh, Sabbath Age. I also love all the singer like Blackie Loveless or Wasp, not not bad, because we are with a very raspy uh, vocals. Uh, not the older of late is the best for me. Uh, the kind of um, the vocals that I really like, very strong. Yes. Okay, mais uma, Marcos Miller. Oh, Marcos Miller. One more. Okay, uh, there is a question in Portuguese here for you. Like, <laughs> how is Cisco Vested would defeat Van Helsing? <laughs> I would, uh, Marcus Miller would like to see it in a Funetti as a video clip. How oh, would you I, do that? I never met Mr. Van Helsing, but uh, I'm ready to fight if you if come. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, have you ever considered putting Van Helsing in a video? Because you're the vampire. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> would it be cool? It would, would be a, a, a very nice fight. <laughs> yeah. Who would win? <laughs> the uh, uma pergunta sobre o que, que ele conhece do, 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 do cenário. Se ele acompanha o Brasil em termos de, de, de uh -huh. heavy metal. Uh, George is asking if you know any band from the Brazilian scenery here, like heavy metal or even rock. But of course, I know Sepultura uh, or um, the most famous uh, Brazil band that are coming uh, also in Italy uh, many times. Uh, but um, not so many underground uh, bands because I don't follow any. You know, I, I, I really usually prefer to listen to uh, old stuff, uh, 70 stuff. So I'm not aware so much of, of the new situation of the band. Yeah. Well, ele ouve mais as coisas mais antigas assim do Brasil, né? tipo essa cultura que ele conhece, mas do underground assim ele não é tão ligado assim, porque ele escuta mais coisas antigas mesmo, né? mais influenciado por esse tipo de coisa assim. Mais algum Legal. Acho que a gente fechou, meu amigo Christian. Ah, peraí, tem mais umas perguntas aqui para ele. Uh, I would like to ask you a curiosity here uh, about the lyrical content. Uh, you were a band that was always linked to horror, satanism, occultism. And uh, how is it to be a band linked to that kind of stuff in Rome, where everyone is Christian? By the way, my name is Christian. <laughs> I don't know, because um, also in Italy, uh, we all, uh, many times we have um, been censored. Uh, after a concert, we reach the police uh, that uh, control us, uh, or the priest that uh, they try to exorcise me, or uh, the Benedict the stage uh, after a show, or many funny uh, stuff like this. Uh, three years, no, four years ago, when we was in the south of Italy for a festival like at Liner, um, the, um, the church of the town where we played uh, gave us a denounce to the police because uh, they, they denounced us because uh, we was blasphemy for blasphemy because we, mm -hmm. we had a uh, naked nun on stage uh, that uh, used a cross for a uh, touch uh, these intimate parts <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, they give us a denounce uh, with the police uh, every one of us and uh, of the crew have to go several times to the police station uh, to declare uh, the, uh, the facts and uh, and there was quite um, um, a cause with the lawyers just to, to free us from uh, this uh, is accusing of uh, bastomy. Yeah. 
It's funny. It's like always have a lawyer. That's why I, I only explained that it was just a show. It's a rock and roll show. It's like to see a movie. There's nothing uh, real. Yeah, we're not. Uh, but, but people. Okay. And... <laughs> Call it Satan. Traduz para nós aí. Eu vou dar a portuguesa version para os povos. Eu falo que o problema lá é que os shows do DFSS ou era assim, a banda sempre foi meio que censurada, assim, sempre dava problema com polícia ou com algum padre local lá que estava tentando ou exercizar ele ou benzer ele depois do show. Eu não tinha nenhuma dúvida disso. E quatro anos atrás eles tiveram um problema também com a igreja local lá de um festival na Itália, que eles foram headliners lá e foi acabar todo mundo na polícia lá tendo que dar depoimento, porque os caras denunciaram eles por blasfêmia e botar mulher pelada no palco, essas coisinhas básicas assim. É então, sad tipo, but true. Sad but true. Sad but true. Eu acho que a gente encerrou, Cristian, a gente liberar o, o, o Steve, né? Eu acho que a gente conseguiu dar uma atualizada aí, o novo álbum. Eu acho que vale a pena, a gente recomenda, a Heavy Cult eu recomendo o novo play, né? O Ten do, do, do DFSS e também conhecer um pouco do passado aí, muito, muito rico dessa banda Sim. aí, né? Eu acho que era isso, Cristian. Tem mais ah, alguma okay, coisa? Ok, eu vou finalizar aqui. Não, eu só vou fazer mais uma pergunta para ele, assim. Uh, we are just finishing the, the interview now, okay, and uh -huh. uh, also talking to the people here about the importance of the SS, the SS, sorry, <laughs> and uh, about the importance of this new album, because we really expected that this new album be released here in Brazil in order to attract more people to look at the past of the band, not only the future, because the past of the band is really important for us here too. Because, as you know, and as you said, we only have two of your albums released here in Brazil. Yeah. And uh, we missed eight. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, I, I think in time they will look to the band and see like, okay, it's really worth investing money and releasing band here in Brazil. So that's why for us, Uh, the success uh, of Ten is really important because uh, if they release it here in Brazil, obviously it will be welcomed. But also, it's important because most of the people will look for the album and look for the other albums too, which is pretty important too for yeah. us and for the band too. So uh, I really want to uh, thank you for your patience uh, with us for this. Thank interview. you to you. It was a pleasure. I hope that uh, Ten and the other album can publish it in, in Brazil as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope like they it. publish the DG with the comic book. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You were very nice to talk to you, okay? Então, galera, obrigado, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you to you guys. See you uh, next time. Christian, obrigadão. Yeah. E semana que vem a gente tem uma agenda com o Tobias também, o teu, teu parceiro, o Christian Sim, o É assim Christian que fala, será? Oh, uh, uma coisa... Hey, Steve, wait some... Just a meu... One minute. I want to show okay. you something. Ok. <risos> ai, ai, ai. Olha lá, meu Deus do céu. Tirou o quadro da parede, o Christian. Ok. This is... Uh, let me see if I can show you here. Uh, Forever. A painting done by a friend of mine. Uh huh. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice cover heart. Let me see if this thing uh, I, I, I hear. Uh huh. Great. It's the, the death of Cachaça. <laughs> can you see the. Could be a shot? cover art for that assassin uh, Brazil version. Wow, <laughs> I, I, I think Marcus Miller would be very pleased to publish this. <laughs> I really love this one. And you have Great. two of Thank you. Legal, galera. Muito bom. He is a great comic book fan and a great fan of yours, too. <laughs> great. Galera, brigadão. A gente agradece aí. E semana que vem o Tobias... Chris... Fala o nome do cara aí, que eu nunca sei falar. Tobias Christensen. Is yeah, this member? Okay. Is this member? 
Grave, aqui terça-feira com a gente, conversando sobre Rock Pauleira. Galera, obrigado pela audiência. Steve, one more. Thank you so much. Thank you, Death you guys. Bye. Christian, Bye. abraço.